All right, everyone, welcome back to the Rich Mind Podcast. If you're beginning to wake up and question the narratives that we've been taught, the things that we've been taught in our lives in terms of from a financial standpoint, in terms of how to get ahead, in terms of how to generate and create some wealth in our life and some and achieve that financial freedom that you're probably looking for, just like I am. First off, congratulations, because that's the beginning point. When you begin to wake up and realize that you need to take responsibility, you need to be in control of what's going on and how you're being fed information. Uh, you need to be in control of your current financial situation. And once you take responsibility and take control, you can definitely begin taking different action steps. And that's exactly what I want to help you do on today's episode. Today, I have five things that I started off with at the very beginning. These are five things you can begin to do immediately, right away, as soon as you jump off of this episode, that will help you begin that process, begin the process of getting the answers to the questions that you have. Why are you not able to get ahead? How come I am struggling from this inflation? Why are supposedly so many other people doing so well while I'm not necessarily doing so well for myself or for my family? How in the world am I going to generate some wealth for me in my future? How am I going to retire at some point in my future when I decide that I don't necessarily want to work anymore? Well, today, like I said, I've got five different things I want to share with you. These are the things that I started off with when I first started my journey uh, several years ago. And it's helped me to bridge that gap from a very negative, let's say, net worth to I'm not going to proclaim that I'm the wealthiest person in the whole wide world. But let's just say I've been able to flip the script and generate uh, some wealth for myself, for my family, which has then allowed me some freedom to then uh, continue to build upon that wealth, right, uh, for my family. Start thinking about some legacy ideas uh, for myself, for my family, for my grandkids. I have a grandson now, but for my grandchildren, uh, just moving forward. And that's what I want for you today. So let's dive into those five things. And uh, hopefully you can take some action as soon as you jump off of this episode uh, here today. First off, in the, one of the first things that I personally did for myself, and this was huge uh, in terms of getting a really a good grasp of where I was financially at that moment, was I created my own personal financial statement. Now, that's very important. You need to understand uh, where you are in a, from a, a financial standpoint. You need to calculate and determine what your income, your expenses, what assets you might have, and what your liabilities are. Now, if those are terms that are might be new to you, then I would highly recommend you go out and grab a copy of the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. He spells out in that book between assets, liabilities, what they are. Uh, he gives you some very basic, simple terms. We won't go into that today, but start there. Grab that book and start diving in, learning what an income statement is, learn what a balance sheet is, and learn to then start plugging in your numbers where you are, right? You need to get a baseline for the numbers that you have for yourself. And if you don't have that, you don't know exactly where you stand. And without knowing where you stand, you're not going to be able to make decisions moving forward. So a personal financial statement is, would be the first step. Now, if you would like, I have one uh, that I've created for myself, and I can send that over to you if you'd be interested in, in having that. Uh, it's just a, a spreadsheet or a Google sheet is actually what I use. Uh, I'd be more than happy to send you the uh, blank version, the one that I use that you can plug in, start plugging in your own numbers. Uh, just send me an email or even leave me a comment down below if you're watching this on YouTube. And I'd be more than happy to send that over to you. Uh, that would be a great start for you to, to start beginning to create your personal financial statement. The second step, the second thing I want you to start focusing on right now, once you get your personal financial statement down, you're going to see in real time in numbers, whether it's on a computer screen or you can even write it down get you a sheet of paper and just uh, mark it off into four uh, quadrants and you can handwrite your information down as well if you, if you don't necessarily want to use a computer. But anyways, you're going to see in, right in front of you your, your numbers. And what I want you to begin right away is eliminate or reduce as much as you possibly can your consumer debt, your credit card debt, your uh, student loans if you can. So anything that is coming out of your pocket, consumer debt, anything you are taking on debt for that you are having to pay out of your own pocket to pay for those things. You need to try to eliminate that as much as you possibly can, including and up to uh, car loans. You need to try to figure out if you can get out from underneath your car loans. Uh, so that's one thing that I've done personally. Uh, I, I drive older cars. You'd be surprised. My cars right now, one is uh, going on 15 years old and the other one I have is pushing 18 years old. 
but they're great cars. They run fantastic. If you have questions and have want some ideas on some different cars to look for, but the point is I have no notes on them and no, and a note just means a loan. I don't have a loan on them, which allows me then to take what capital I generate. And we're going to talk about business here in just a second, but Kate takes the capital that I generate and apply it into my asset column versus into my liability column, which is your car note that you're spending on a car that you may or may not uh, need at this point. If you're trying to build financial wealth and financial abundance in your life, you need to eliminate your consumer debt, including credit cards, including car loans. Uh, potentially, uh, you know, we can talk about your house, whether your house is an asset or not. We can talk about that, have that discussion. We won't go into that today, but anyways, just start focusing on eliminating your consumer debt as quickly as much as you possibly can. Third step, I want you to begin researching business opportunities. I want you to think about what side hustle can you start in the latter part here of 2024, if you're catching this in real time or even in the future of 2025, what side hustle can you begin starting uh, today or even relatively soon? Let's just put it that way. So one thing when I decided that I was going to leave the W2 world and I was going to start getting out there here into this entrepreneurial space, one thing I did that was super simple, and you can do this for yourself, right, is the side hustle that I started was driving for Uber and Lyft. Those are the, so those are perfect examples of things. Now, those aren't the only things that you can do, but those are perfect examples of some things of side hustles that you can begin to start generating some income beyond your current wage. If you're a W-2 employee that you can start building up some capital to then think about applying it towards some assets. Think of some side hustles. Think of a business that you can start. Right? The crazy thing is, and I've had discussions, so I've actually ridden in Ubers or Lyfts, right? I'm being taken from place to place. And I've actually asked the driver if they realize that just because they've started this side hustle, the benefits they get from a tax standpoint, I mean, you can operate just like a business. You're a sole proprietor, but you, you are a business, which generates uh, some tax benefits. Now, I'm not a tax advisor. I'm not a tax lawyer. Uh, do your own due diligence, make sure you're getting educated uh, through the proper channels. And I am not that guy. But what I'm telling you is that from my own personal experience, that once you step over into the side hustle and start generating income from a business standpoint, you begin to unlock some opportunities for yourself that you may not even realize are even possible. So think about that. What side hustle, what business can I begin to generate here at the end of 2024 and even going into 2025? So moving on to number four, I want you to begin thinking about, once again, kind of tying back into the side hustle idea. I want you to really start looking for opportunities to serve other people. That's where business is generated. The biggest businesses, the people that are able to start successful businesses, they focus on solving problems for other people. That's what a business is. And when you're able to do that, you then you can obviously charge uh, for some fees, charge whether it's a product or a service, and begin offering that product or service out there in the marketplace. And that's where you begin to generate a profit. And you're going to do that without having to work for a wage. And that's where you begin to start seeing a lot more of these tax benefits. So just even moving it back into the side hustle, I talked about driving for Uber or Lyft. You're providing a service. You're providing using your vehicle to provide a service to a customer that wants to move from point A to point B. Because of that service that you are providing, you will get a profit. And from a profit standpoint, you're not working for a wage. You're not working for an hourly rate. You're working for a profit. And we begin to shift that mindset of looking to find ways to serve the community, uh, finding problems that need to be solved. Uh, one thing that we are working on in my family and my wife and I, we are working towards, she has a passion for helping brides and working in the, the wedding space. She offers a day of wedding coordination. Uh, you'd be surprised how chaotic a wedding can be. If you had, if you've been married or if you're in the process of going through that process, you'd be surprised. And so what she does is she takes all of that stress off of the bride's plate, all of, off of the wedding family's plate. She takes all of that stress, all of those details, all of that stuff that comes along with generating a wedding. And because when she does that, that generates a ton of value to that family and is able to help them and take a lot of these things off of her plate. And because of that, she can generate a profit. And that's where business has started from. So I want you to go out there today and start looking around. Where are opportunities out there where you can start solving problems 
for other people. They can be very basic and they can be very large, uh, but start with the basics at first. Think of different side hustles that you can start right out of your own home. Uh, when I started in my Amazon business many years ago, that was something I started out of my home. And what that was, was no more than me finding products that people wanted to buy in the Amazon marketplace. And then I supplied it to them uh, at a price that was fair for both of us. And then obviously I began to make a profit because of that. And once I started that uh, process for myself, my entire life changed. It's a complete different mindset shift. And I, I encourage you that if you want to become financially free moving forward and find some abundance in your life, you've got to make that shift. And that's what I want to encourage you to do today. So I have three resources. We're moving into number five now. I have three resources. These are things that you can start doing. This won't cost you anything other than some time on your computer and start doing some research. Start the education process of understanding how to read numbers, understanding uh, what a profit is or potentially is for uh, a particular business or a particular asset. So as we get, begin to wrap this one up for today, I just want to make, definitely leave you with three different resources that you can use to go out there immediately and start doing some research for yourself uh, as far as building up some of this financial education for you. And when you're able to start pulling the trigger, when you have this excess capital from these excesses that you're beginning to uh, build and create uh, and start building some wealth for yourself. So let's, let's dive into those uh, resources here. The first one is Mid-South Home Buyers. So if you type in Mid-South homebuyers.com into a window and to a browser, you're going to see resources and even education materials to start helping you understand uh, different opportunities from a single family home opportunity standpoint. Uh, these are located down in Memphis, Tennessee. And what I want you to do is start seeing what the difference is between looking just on Zillow and looking for a, a property that you're going to live in versus an investment property. You need to begin educating yourself on the difference. Uh, they will give you the numbers. They will show you uh, the list price or the, the price that it is for sale. They'll also show you some of the debt opportunities where you can put debt on those properties. And then they're ultimately gonna show you the uh, cash flow, potential cash flow for that property. And that's the profit. That's what you're looking for from a, a standpoint for some assets being built into your own life. So Mid-South Home Buyers would be the first one. The second one, if you want to start diving in or looking into some commercial properties, uh, commercial properties being like warehouses, uh, uh, strip malls, Th think of it anything other than just a, your rental or just your residence, right? Anything that other people don't live in per se. Uh, commercial properties would be, uh, as I mentioned, uh, warehouse space. Uh, think of like Amazon, what they're using to distribute the products and services like that. But a great place to do some research and just start getting some ideas of some of the numbers is called loopnet.com loopnet.com. And I'll have all these links in the show notes for you as well today, but go out there and start doing some research, start diving in and learning about the numbers. Uh, they give you quite a bit of data. They're not going to give you everything, but they'll give you enough to start realizing and understanding what it's going to take to potentially invest in some of those things in the future. And that's where it starts to begin fun, become fun is when you start to realize that, wow, as I start building these assets, as I start building this wealth, these are the things that, that the wealthiest folks in the world, this is what they invest in these properties, uh, in assets, just like this, that it's going to pay them over and over and over, uh, which is, it's a fantastic thing. So loopnet.com. And last but not least, uh, this is a business website. I go on here often and it's a great resource to just start seeing what businesses. So businesses can be assets as well. A lot of times folks will talk about uh, real estate, which is fantastic. I own real estate. I'm also trying to build businesses. You don't have to necessarily even start your own business. You can buy somebody else's business. And so this uh, resource is a great place to start doing some research in terms of finding some businesses that are for sale. And that resource is biz, B-I-Z, buy sell. So B I Z B U Y S E L L.com. If you just type that into a browser or, uh, or any type of uh, window on the internet, you should be able to find that relatively easy. Now, once again, this is a free resource. You can start diving in, you can pinpoint what locations you want. You can talk about what, uh, what types of businesses you're looking for, uh, revenue, uh, all different types of things. You can start just really diving in and seeing what's potentially out there uh, just to start getting yourself acclimated. The ideas of looking for assets versus always looking for uh, 
things that aren't assets, liabilities, right? You need to focus on building up that asset part of your financial statement, which is what we talked about at the very beginning here today. So let's review uh, real quick as we wrap this one up for a close. First off, I want to thank you for joining me here on the podcast episode today. I'm really trying to share as much as that I know some of the things that I've done. Uh, I hope to have some more guests on as well to share some of their wisdom to help you really start building and creating this generational wealth uh, that I know will help you and your family moving forward. So as I said, let's dive into uh, those five real quick as a review, and then we'll wrap this one up for a close. So first off, your personal financial statement, figure out your numbers. You've got to know your numbers. If you don't know your numbers, then you won't know how and where you need to move forward uh, to start generating this wealth for yourself. I want you to begin focusing on eliminating consumer debt. There's good debt and bad debt. And we'll talk about that, or I have talked about that in the past, and I'll definitely talk about more about that in the future as well. I want you to uh, research potential business opportunities, side hustles. Uh, Where can you start a business in a relatively short period of time? I gave you some examples from that as well. Uh, One thing, and I didn't uh, mention this, and this was a quote from Jim Rohn. If you're familiar with the Rich Mind podcast, I'm all about the personal development. And Jim Rohn has been a huge influence on my life. And one thing he said uh, that I heard him say one time, and it's really stuck with me, is he says, work full-time on your job while you work part-time on building your fortune. And I just love that. So I just want to leave that with you as well. So then I want you to then start thinking about focusing on learning to see potential opportunities out there in the marketplace. What are people needing? What problems need to be solved? Those are business opportunities. And I want you to start looking for those business opportunities in your community. Uh, You don't have to go too far just within your own community. You'd be surprised what's out there. And then I mentioned three resources for you to start doing some research uh, to start figuring out and start learning, learning some of the numbers, learning some of the verbiage, uh, learning some of the uh, uh, the ins and outs as far as like how to build these assets, where assets are even available uh, all over the, the country. I'm talking here from the US, but even all over the world, you'd be surprised at even how you'll be able to find different opportunities, different assets to potentially add to your portfolio. If you learn the basics, if you do the things that we've been talking about here so far today. So I appreciate your time. I really appreciate your your uh, attention. And I really hope that this has been valuable for you today. If you wouldn't mind, share this with your family and friends. If you're watching this on YouTube, if you want to like and subscribe to the channel, I greatly appreciate that. I'm really trying to uh, build out this Rich Mind podcast. I really want to try to help folks as, as you're beginning to wake up to the understanding that, you know, everything we've been taught, everything we've been said isn't necessarily exactly accurate. You're seeing folks get ahead and why are they getting ahead? And you're beginning to have those questions. As I mentioned at the very beginning, congratulations, because that means that you're on the path of going down and figuring out how to solve those problems for yourself and for your family. And I'm telling you, they're not as hard as they seem. They're just different. And if you understand the differences, you're once you see it, you can't unsee it. I, I talk about that a lot, or I've, you know, especially around my family, it's like the movie, The Wizard of Oz. Once you see behind the curtain, you can't unsee it which is super exciting. And I'm super excited for you moving forward here today. So go out there, have a fantastic day. As I mentioned, I appreciate your time and attention. And I look forward to coming back with the next episode again very soon. Until then, bye now.